Good morning, God's beloved, and welcome to the Kent United Church of Christ, an open and affirming, accessible to all, and wise congregation. What does that mean? It means that we're open and affirming to those from the LGBTQ plus community, for those with different abilities, and for those struggling with mental health issues and their families. We strive to be welcoming, inclusive, supportive, and engaging of you wherever you are on your life's journey. We do not come as perfect people, but we do come perfectly loved by God. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. We are each a child of God. No matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, we are blessed. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. We come to worship the God who feeds us, who fills us, and who blesses us. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Let us rejoice in the love of God and worship our God together in prayer, song, and praise. Let us pray. O God of many blessings, be with us in our joy and in our sorrow. Help us to reach out with your love to those in need, that we may not be satisfied until all are fed. Bless each one of us, Lord, and comfort all who are unable to worship with us today. Shower your blessings on our worship as we pray all this through Jesus the Christ, our teacher and our guide. Amen. Please hear our prayer of confession. We try to care for each other, especially when there is pain and sorrow, and when we witness injustice. But we cannot find blessing in poverty and hunger. Sometimes it feels just too hard to offer relief or to work for change. We prefer to stay in our comfortable spaces or chose to walk past those in need. Sometimes we are afraid. Forgive us when we serve ourselves more often than we serve you, O God. We come to you with humble hearts. Amen. Amen. 
beloved of God, hear now these words of assurance. God knows your mind and knows your heart. God forgives those who seek forgiveness with sincere hearts and minds. God offers grace of hope and courage to change our ways and confront injustice. Blessed are those who trust in God, whose trust is in God. Know that you are loved and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Knowing this grace and forgiveness, I invite you now to share the peace of Christ, the peace that passes all human understanding with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus the Christ be with you today and always. Hi, everyone. I'm Pastor Kim, and it's time for Snapchat. I wanted to tell you about someone I've been following closely over the last year. Her name is Amanda Gorman. Have you heard of her before? Maybe you saw her at President Biden's inauguration as the new president of the United States last year. Or maybe you've read her book, Change Sings. Amanda is a writer, speaker, and poet, and she is very famous for being such a young person. Something I found out about Amanda was that she has a speech impediment that makes it hard for her to say certain words. Sometimes when she speaks, she has to work really hard to say those words the way they're meant to be said. But instead of thinking about her speech impediment as a challenge, she thinks about it as a gift and a strength. She doesn't let it keep her from sharing her voice with the rest of the world. Thanks be to God. Amanda is also a black woman and she knows that her ancestors were slaves. She has been able to use her poetry and her voice to speak up not only for herself, but also for others who have been hated and excluded for the color of their skin. In our Bible story today, Jesus was teaching and healing people as he did. Then he turned to his disciples and said something kind of strange. He said, God blesses poor people for theirs is the kingdom of God. God blesses hungry people, for they will be satisfied. God blesses people who are crying, because they will soon be laughing. Blessings come to people who are hated, excluded, mocked, and cursed because they follow Jesus. Why is he saying that poor hungry, and crying people are blessed by God. We tend to think of the word blessing to mean lucky, but it actually means that something is holy or set apart or special. I think Jesus is saying God considers everyone as special and holy, not just the people we think are special or holy. And when we believe in Jesus and act like him, people who don't feel special begin to feel special. Poor people feel a little richer, get a little richer. Hungry people are fed. People who have been excluded are welcomed and celebrated. Unloved people are loved. People are blessed. God doesn't just love the people who are considered rich and powerful. God loves and blesses people who are considered poor and weak. That was a different kind of message that was going around in those days. It was a change from what people normally heard, and it was exciting. We still hear that message today, but we can be part of the change that Jesus shows us in the Bible. Everyone is loved and blessed by God. In Amanda Gorman's book, Change Sings, she writes, Change Sings where? There, inside me, because I'm the change I want to see. As I grow, 
it grows like seeds. I am just what the world needs. I'm the voice where freedom rings. You're the love your bright heart brings. Amanda has lived a life that shows healing and love to other people, just like Jesus did. She knows she is blessed and she shows others that they are blessed. We can live a life like that too. Will you pray with me? Creator God, you created us so beautiful and unique. We all have different skin colors and hairstyles, different shapes of our eyes and different heights and weights. And we are all beautiful creations of yours that you consider blessed, holy, special. Help us live lives that are blessed so we may be a blessing to other people in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear now a reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 17 through 26. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Here ends the reading from God's word. Thanks be to God who is still speaking. Jesus has been up in the mountains where he spent time praying. He comes down from that mountain and Luke tells us that Jesus joins his disciples and the crowds that came to be with this teacher and healer and that he came down to stand on a level place right there with them. Think of that. Jesus does not meet them looking down from the mountaintop or from a place of power or privilege, or even from a pulpit. No, he meets the crowds right where they are. And so I sit in the pews today. Luke calls this sermon of Jesus's the Sermon on the Plain, P-L-A-I-N. It's his version of the Beatitudes, Beatitude from the Latin word meaning blessedness. The Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel is what we refer to in Matthew's Gospel as the Sermon on the Mount, except that Luke includes a list of woes in addition to the blessings. And according to Luke, Jesus stands with them not up on the mount above them, but there on a level place. He comes down to their level, symbolizing the way he is leveling the injustices of the world while emphasizing that we are all one. No one is above or below another. He looks right into the eyes of th those who had come to meet him and to be healed. And heal he does. He heals all of them who came for healing. And then he looks at his disciples and all those people in the crowd 
and lovingly says, Blessed are you. Blessed are you. This is a very personal address. Jesus is speaking directly to their hearts. It is a proclamation of blessing. It is a proclamation of their blessedness and their humanness. A few weeks ago, we were reminded of Jesus' mission when he was handed the scroll in the synagogue and read the words from the prophet Isaiah. He really shook things up at his home synagogue in Nazareth by proclaiming the prophet Isaiah's good news for the poor and that this word, this prophecy, was fulfilled right then and there in their hearing because he himself was, is the fulfillment of the scriptures. Jesus continues to proclaim good news for the poor in this, his sermon on the plain, when he tells the poor that they are blessed. And not only are the poor blessed, but so are the hungry. Oh, and so is everyone who weeps. Cry those tears. Let it out. For one day you will laugh the hardest. As for the poor, yours is the reign of God. The realm of God is yours. The hungry? You, you are filled to a fullness that you have never known. For those in the crowd who had been excluded, rejected, despised, or mocked because of their faith, they can leap for joy. This is what the blessings that Jesus spoke this is what they were all about. Can you imagine hearing these blessings for yourself? Jesus also reminds them that even the wisest prophets were defamed by their ancestors. And what is a prophet? One who believes in God's story. One who sees God's vision and then lives a life guided by that divine vision. Now, living according to God's vision is anything but popular and almost always misunderstood. But those who see through divine lenses and not their own, those who proclaim Jesus's good news and God's vision of shalom, this kingdom of God, those are truly blessed people in this world and the next. While we usually think of blessings as encouragement or words of profound hope, and they are, Jesus' blessings here are not about something to come, something that might happen. These are blessings about the state of our being now. These proverb-like proclamations Declarations are naming a state of being right now. Blessed are you because you are God's beloved, Jesus says. As biblical scholar Eugene Boring puts it, a blessing declares a reality that exists by divine power, not something we should do. So another way of saying what Jesus expressed in this Sermon on the Plain is plainly this. You're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You're blessed when you're ravenously hungry. Then you're ready for the messianic meal. You're blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy then comes in the morning. Count yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws you out, every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit you and to discredit me, Jesus says. What that means is that the truth is just too close for comfort and that that person 
is uncomfortable. These beatitudes are meant to be taken literally in the here and now. They are to be understood in the present tense. They are to help us see as God sees them, to help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear what God would see and hear. Jesus is not only promising the poor will be rich as in one day. No, he is declaring that they are rich now. Jesus is not comforting the grieving by telling them that they will be overwhelmed with joy and laughter, but they already can find joy even in the midst of it. Yes, even amid terrible loss and pain, Jesus has good news for us. We would never know the light if we didn't know the darkness. We understand what it's like not to feel joy. We understand what it's like not to have enough of something, to be hungry. Jesus is looking at us straight in the eyes in this Sermon on the Plain and telling us that we are already blessed because we have insights and perspectives that this human blessed journey offers us. And for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, we will embrace our blessedness even in the midst of struggle. We will see what is divine in the heart of our human suffering. On Wednesday evenings, we have been gathering to discuss the wisdom and revelations of Julian of Norwich, a medieval anchorist who lived in the 14th century during the plague. Thanks to her mystical encounters with Christ, she could clearly see the divine presence in all things and understood that even in the face of the black death, tremendous loss of life, disease, isolation, and poverty, there is still, even with all of those things present and real, there is no separation between us and God. During our lives here on earth, she wrote in her showings, as she called them, we experience a wondrous mixture of well and woe. She goes on, the various pains and transgressions of this life fill our hearts with sorrow and cloud the eyes of our soul. But we cultivate our intention and wait for God. We have faith in God's mercy and grace and trust that he is working within us. In his goodness, he opens the eyes of our understanding and gives us insight. During our lives here on earth, we experience a wondrous mixture of well and woe. This is precisely what Jesus was expressing in his sermon on the plain. There is wellness and joy in this life, and there is suffering and woe too. And in all of it, you're blessed. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are blessed. You are beloved. Luke's Beatitudes preached in this sermon on the plain include four blessings followed by a litany of woes. And this is different from Matthew's account. Because in that huge crowd surrounding Jesus were not only the poor and the downtrodden, but also the privileged and the powerful. The point is that we are both poor and privileged, downtrodden and powerful. Within each of us is all of that. We may be hungry for acceptance or love, but fully fed. We may be living the high life now, 
but who's to say what could happen tomorrow? We are a wondrous mixture of well and woe, which is why Jesus also proclaimed those woes in his sermon on the plain. Woe to you who are rich now, because that's as good as it's going to get for you. Woe to you who are full now, because you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you too will experience pain. Woe to you who are popular, because you are just like the false prophets. Remember, a prophet is one who believes in God's story, who sees God's vision. That's not very popular. Perhaps, friends, you are worshiping this morning, needing to hear that you are blessed. Jesus is preaching these beatitudes for you. Or perhaps you are needing a warning, a wake-up call, a woe. What kind of message are you needing today? A warm embrace? A thumbs up? A gentle nudge? A kick in the pants? Or a clobber over the head? Do you need a blessing or a woe? Probably both. Wherever you are in this season of your life, in that wondrous mixture of well and woe, what are you needing? Blessings, woes, Most of us don't want a woe, of course. We don't want to have to face our own humanity or our own privilege and the tremendous responsibility that comes with it. We don't want to be woed, usually. But nor do we always want to hear that we too have been anointed by the Spirit of the Lord to preach good news to the poor. Release to all those who feel imprisoned and sight to those who have been blindsided by life. We don't want to believe that our laughter may not last and that we cannot avoid pain so deep that we we absolutely flood our beds with tears and our hearts in anguish. No, we do everything we can to avoid the woes, and yet when we're honest with ourselves, we know when we need a wake-up call. And yet Jesus is here, right where we are, with us, speaking truth to power in love, just as he brings good news to the poor and brings good news from them. Even as he shares woes and warnings, he never leaves us. He does not issue them from a place of power and authority up on some mountaintop. No, he shares his wisdom with those right in front of him. He shares with us a reminder that with blessing comes woe, and that was true even for him. Along with compassion comes accountability. Along with the comfort of the Beatitudes comes the challenge of the gospel. As theologian Anna Bladel writes, the Beatitudes are an invitation into viewing the world through the lens of God. Friends, whether or not you need a blessing or a woe of warning today, Jesus' message for all of us comes down to this. The human experience is just that, human. We are incurably human, full of challenges and suffering and pain. And we are also capable of profound joy, sheer delight and awe and a life of blessedness. 
So whatever your circumstances, if you have eyes to see, ears to hear as God would see and hear, you will know that there is always a blessing to be found, a lesson to be learned, and that a light always shines in the darkness. We are indeed a wondrous mix of well and woe. What a blessing. Oh,
please join me in prayer. Compassionate God, we recognize that this world is a broken place, hurt by poverty, famine, disease, and a pandemic that has touched all of our lives, hurt by other pandemics of racism, sexism, ableism. Lord God, you are the God who empowers us to level the playing field, just as Jesus gave his sermon on the plain. He came down to be right where the people are. Help us always to know that we are one. We are not above or below anyone else, but we are one in Christ Jesus. We are one in you, O Lord. We admit that sometimes it is us that makes the world a broken place, that creates divisions. And we confess that our hearts also suffer from anger, resentment, and jealousy. Renew us in your love, O God, and heal us with the comfort of your abundant grace. Renew this congregation. Empower us to continue the vital and vibrant ministry that you have called us to. Lord God, we are amazed by all that you are doing in our midst, even when we could not do it together in person we have continued to be empowered, emboldened by your love and by your power. Awaken us to the roles that we can play in healing your creation, God. For we know that nothing else matters if we do not have a planet home to call our own anymore. Strengthen us through the power of the Holy Spirit to hear your word and move forward in faith. Help us to see as you do, to hear as you do, and to live our lives according to your vision. Increase our faith, God, that we might be prophets, believing in your story and seeing your vision. Teach us how to seek the blessing in the woe and to be aware that in the woes of our lives, there are still blessings to be found. Walk with us in our poverty and our privilege, our despair and our joy, our suffering and our thriving. We thank you for this human journey, this wondrous mix of well and woe that brings us closer to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who also experienced it all. It was Jesus who taught us to pray together as one, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
How shall we show your love, your pardon to believe? You bid us share as we are blessed and to give as we receive. Let us now offer our gifts and tithes as a way to show our love for the God who is love and who blesses us with love and light, even in times of darkness. Let us dedicate our offerings. Gracious and loving God, who blesses us with so many good gifts, we bring these offerings with the hope of turning tears to laughter and sorrow to joy. May they truly be a blessing for those who most need them now. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. Church family, I am so excited to say that next Sunday, we will worship again in person here in our sanctuary. I can't wait to worship the Lord our God together with you in person. For you are blessed and you are beloved. Go now with eyes to see and ears to hear the way God would see and hear. Go now celebrating this wondrous mixture of well and woe, finding the blessing in the woe, finding the light that always shines in the darkness, and know that through it all, you are blessed. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord until we meet again.